Hello and welcome to a new video series on astronomy. My name is Mr Nelms and I am one of the physics and astronomy teachers here at Haberdashers Adams. Over the next few videos we will be taking a closer look at our nearest neighbour in the solar system, the Moon. Three, two, one. We choose to go to the Moon. The Moon. It is the most prominent body in our night sky and has fascinated us throughout the history of humanity. It is also the only object in the solar system that we can see any features of clearly with the naked eye, making it a great starting point for our videos. In this video, we're going to look at one of the easiest things to observe, perhaps harder to visualize with the moon, uh, which is the phases of its cycle as it orbits the Earth. The moon is a non-luminous object, meaning that we can only see it by the light it reflects from the sun. There is a common misconception that the moon is only visible at night, but it can be seen during the daytime, as long as it is not too close to the sun in the sky. Depending on where the earth, sun and moon are relative to each other though, we will see a differing amount of the moon's surface illuminated. This gives us the different phases of the moon. When the moon is between the earth and the sun, it is only the far side of the moon's surface which is illuminated. This leaves the near side of the moon in darkness, which is otherwise known as a new moon. These are actually nearly impossible to observe from earth due the, to the proximity of the moon to the sun in the sky at this point in its orbit. The apparent disappearance of the moon from our skies followed by it returning as it continues on its orbit, is what led to its naming as a new moon. However, even though the moon is not visible at this time, that does not mean that all is lost for astronomers. Without the moon, uh, which is much brighter than any other star or planet in the night sky, it makes it far easier to see other objects, so stars and planets will become clearer to see in the night sky. As the moon orbits the Earth, the right-hand edge of the near side of the moon becomes illuminated. This allows us to see a waxing, or growing, crescent from Earth. After the moon has been through a quarter of its cycle, the right-hand side of the moon will be fully illuminated. This is usually referred to as a half-moon, though the proper name is the first quarter phase. From here, the amount of the near side of the moon that is illuminated for a viewer on Earth continues to grow. After another eighth of a cycle, we get a waxing gibbous moon. Gibbous comes from the Latin for hump, and from these images, it should be clear to see why. Now the moon is halfway through its orbit. The side which is fully illuminated is now entirely facing the Earth. This gives us a full moon. Having reached the full moon stage, the moon now begins to wane or shrink. This takes it through the waning gibbous, third quarter, and waning crescent phases, until it is back at the new moon position again. This cycle repeats, with the moon going through one full orbit of the Earth, roughly every four weeks. But hang on, I hear you say. Exactly how long does it take for the moon to orbit the Earth? To properly answer this, we need to consider that whilst the moon is orbiting around the Earth, the Earth is also orbiting the Sun. If we look at the motion of the moon here, starting at one full moon, and then travelling 360 degrees round again in its orbit, it has not yet reached the next full moon. This 360 degree orbit is referred to as a sidereal month, which lasts 27.3 days. This measures how long it will take for the moon to be in the same position relative to distant background stars. This may not be useful for the lunar cycle, but it is for working out where stars are relative to the moon. To get to the next full moon, we need uh, the moon to travel slightly further so that the moon can line up with the new position of the Earth relative to the sun. 
the moon travels an extra 29 degrees for this to happen for a total angular rotation of 389 degrees between full moons. This is known as a synodic or lunar month and takes 29.5 days to complete. And that concludes our first video in the lunar series. We've just dipped our toes into this topic, so please do look into astronomy in more detail if you've enjoyed what we've shown you today. The entire ambition of this video series is to share a passion I've had for learning about the universe ever since I was given a book about the planets aged just five or six. And hopefully to inspire some of you to pursue astronomy further, either as a hobby or as a topic of study. If you want a good starting point for what to look into after this video, you might want to consider one of these three options. One, why do we always see the same side of the moon's surface? Two, are there any other objects in the solar system that go through phases similar to the moon? And three, why do different planets have different numbers of moons? Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll join us next time where we'll be looking at solar and lunar eclipses.